meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, for you alone are our rock and our fortress. Amen. Text for our meditation is the gospel lesson for this evening, especially the first sentence. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, there's an old saying, the more things change, I'm the only one who knows this one? Okay, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Oh. When someone comes new from afar, and they don't know who they are, it seems like the questions are pretty simple, straightforward. Who are you, where did you come from, and what are you doing? The more things change, the more things stay the same. These are exactly the questions they asked John. John the Baptist was by the River Jordan baptizing. He was preaching that all needed to come and repent of their sins, confess of all they've done wrong, and be baptized in the River Jordan. Leaders were sent from the nation, from Jerusalem, and they were sent down to the River Jordan to figure out what this is. So the first question they asked him was, who are you? And he said, he did not deny, he confessed over and over again, I am not the savior of the world. I am not the Christ who is to come. Okay, if you're not that, then are you Elijah? There's a passage in Malachi saying Elijah will appear before the savior. <coughs> nope, I'm not the Elijah. Are you the prophet? Back in Deuteronomy, Moses had said, there will be a prophet someday who will be like me. Are you that guy? Nope. I'm not that guy either. Okay, if you're not Elijah, you're not the Christ, and you're not the prophet, who are you? And John simply pointed to Isaiah chapter 40. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Who are you? I'm the one sent from God, as God would say. Next question today always is, is where are you from? I think they didn't have to ask that. It's a little nation that kind of knew everybody. Third question is, what are you doing? Then why are you baptizing? If you're neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. Now, I don't think we understand why this is a big issue. Baptizing wasn't really anything done in the Old Testament. Sure, there were ceremonial washings. So before you got ready for the big festivals, you would ceremonially wash yourself. There was washings before you would have a banquet. Remember the time of Jesus' miracle? There are, there are jars there. His first miracle where he turns the water into wine. There are jars there that are meant for washing, for ceremonial cleansing. There were also times when somebody who was not part of the nation of Israel, an outsider would become part and then they would go through a washing. But the people of Israel, confessing their sins and being washed, had never happened before. So they're asking, okay, what are you doing? If you're not the Christ, if you're not Elijah, if you're not the prophet, why are you washing people? It was beyond their experience. They just, they had never seen anything like it before. John answered them, I baptize you with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. Did he answer the question? Not really. He just said, somebody after me is getting even greater than I am. And they're all like, okay, what are we supposed to do about that? But John does this because what is John's job? John's job, as it says here, there was a man who came from God, his name is John, he came as a witness, to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. John's job is clear. He's to prepare the way for the Lord. He's to get ready for the one who's coming after him. John would later say, he must increase I must decrease. It's always about Jesus. It's never about me. 
So all these questions about who you are, where you're from, what are you doing, that's not what's important. What's important is the one who comes after me, the one who will be the savior of the world, the one who will die for the sins of the world. John was not the light. And I still think this is why this is pink tonight. The light is Jesus, which we get next weekend because Advent's kind of condensed, and we get Jesus' birthday Christmas Eve. John is like the light. He's pointing towards the light, but he's not the light himself. Okay, so who are you? My name is John. Where are you from? They didn't really ask that one, but what are you doing? I'm pointing to Jesus. I've been here now, what, almost a month and a half. The questions I get are, who are you, where are you from, and what are you doing? It hasn't really changed. So they want to know, who are you? Well, okay, we actually had a discussion about what I should be called. And I don't tend to use my last name in Rainierson. I'm actually pretty proud of it, but I hate when people butcher it. So I just don't use it. Because Reinerson has been easy for me to say all of my life. But other people have trouble with it. I've actually never had any trouble spelling it either. Because it's always been with me. So who are you? Well, I'm Pastor Tim. Where are you from? Well, that seems to be the question that's a little different than John's time. I have no idea. Some people are really from a place. They grew up there. They were there. Their parents are there. Their grandparents are there. Their great-grandparents you go out to the cemetery, you're related to everybody that's there. I have no such place. I grew up in a variety of places. It doesn't make me a nomad, it just makes me part of this nation that is actually moving a lot. But in this part of the country, they're from some place over the rainbow. No, some place that is theirs and they all know where it is. And so I was visiting with a guy, I'm from Twin Brooks. I am not from South Shore, I am from Twin Brooks. I'm like, what is the difference? I mean, it's like, okay, but that's the big deal. Twin Brooks, not South Shore. I got it. I am from Millbank. I am certainly not from Ortonville, because that's across the border in some far off land they call Minnesota. All right, so who are you? Where are you from? What are you doing? What is my job? Somebody asked me today, I said, my job is to take care of sheep. Most of my sheep do not say, they say all kinds of other things that get themselves into trouble. Sheep that are fluffy and white only say one thing and they don't get in trouble with their words. My sheep have trouble with their words at times. But finally, is my job much different than John's? Because the goal of what I do is not the point to myself. I get to sit by the young ladies up here in front. The prayer I always have there before I get to here is, Lord, may they see you and not me. Because this is not about me, right? Am I the savior of Emmanuel? That's just ridiculous. Emmanuel means God with us. It means that God is the savior. Is any pastor the savior? Is any pastor, any church depend upon the pastor? Of course not. We come, we go, we're here, we're there. We're here for a while, and then we move on. And this church has this whole back thing in the chapel there. You can look at all their faces. But not church doesn't depend on any one of them. Who does the church depend on? Jesus. John said, I must decrease, he must increase. My job is always to prepare the way for the Lord, to witness to what God has done, and to continue to promote that God is at work. What about you? Who are you? I'm getting a few names. Somebody asked me today, how do you learn names? Well, it's work. I had this book, has faces in it, some of your faces. The faces of people who are my age don't look any different than three years ago or four years ago. The faces of the people that are this size have changed. And I'm trying to figure out who they are. So every night when I go back across the street, I'm trying to figure out, okay, who is this? Who is that? I, it's taken a while. But it's only six weeks. I should give myself a little break and just say, okay, we're making some progress on this. Where are you from? Well, that's an important question. 
But far more important is, what are you doing? I don't know that the answer is any different from John. John says, I was sent as a witness to the light. I'm not the light. I was sent as a witness to the light. I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord. I'm the one who's pointing towards Jesus. Who are you? Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 to the disciples, you will be my witnesses in Judea and Galilee and to the ends of the earth. Okay, we know this is not Judea. We know this is not Galilee. That makes this Oh, no, that's Wyoming, actually, at the end of the earth. You get out there and you kind of look like you're going to fall off, maybe. I don't know. We know that we are his witnesses. Now, what does it mean to be a witness? It does not necessarily mean that you go knocking on doors. Because normally the police find the witness, right? And then the witness says what has to be said. A witness is only somebody that's just experienced something. So you could witness to this evening... When you talk to somebody else afterwards, I went to church. We had a candle out. That's the way things go. We have candles out once in a while. Well, we had two that was working and one that didn't. And we're going to focus on the two that was working and not the one that didn't because we're into what works. You could witness to that, right? Are they all working behind me? I don't even know. Okay, those are all good. The young ladies were a little bothered because one didn't, but that's okay. We got all these that work. So we could witness to candles work. We could witness to, we got to sing, we got to pray, we got to listen, we talked about Jesus, we got to see a tree. I didn't know till the night that that's a real tree. I was truly impressed that we had a tree that big. It's all cool, right? We could witness to what God has done in our lives. If somebody said, what was church about tonight? Well, he was talking again, I'm not sure what, but he was talking again. And he said, we are to be God's witness. Witness to his love. Receive his body and blood a little bit. Witness to his love. You know what's an amazing thing? Is you're already forgiven. Right? I, as a called or ordained servant of the word, forgave you your sins. All been wiped out. Can you imagine that? Every last sin is gone. Not because of me and what I did but because I was sent to be his representative and to pronounce that to you. And then we're going to get it again. How often do you need forgiveness? You got it here, you're going to get it up there. Luther once said, you probably need communion about the time you get back to your pew. <laughs> we are forgiven sinners. People who have done what is wrong, and yet God still loves us. We tend to mess up all kinds of things, intentionally, sometimes deliberately, Sometimes accidentally. It doesn't really matter. God continues to be with us. We are witnesses to the fact of God's mercy. I love the way the psalmist put it. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. How is that for simple? He has saved us. He's given this promise of heaven. He gives us eternal life. It's all ours in Christ Jesus. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. Could that be our witness? What do you think? It's not meant to be difficult. It's not meant to be hard. John said, I'm just here pointing to Jesus. I'm just here pointing to Jesus. We're just here pointing to the one who did it all for us. Because it is never about us. It is always about him. We gather to give thanks and praise to the one next week, right? We'll get done with nine months of being in a womb. The real miracle happens in March, March 25th. The eternal God becomes somebody who is two cells living in Mary, and then eight cells, and then more cells, and then more cells, and then he's born. The eternal God did all that for you. He gave out the blessings of heaven. He was a toddler at one point. Couldn't hardly walk, just, you know, trying to figure it out. He was a teenager for you. Would you go through teenage years again on behalf of anybody? God did it. He sent his son to take care of us. He grew up to be a man. And John pointed to him and said, 
that's the guy. Pay attention to him, because in him you have life. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. So who are you? A variety of names. Where are you from? A variety of places. What are you doing? The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. You got it? The memory work for this week, can you say it? The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Oh, I heard myself. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. We're getting better. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Isn't that cool? And Christmas is a week away. Talking about great things. To our God, who has done amazing things in our midst, and continues to do wonderful things always. To our God and Him alone, be all glory and praise both now and forevermore. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, and to life everlasting. Amen.